Well, this short little video will demonstrate how we use the parallel axis theorem when we'd like to know the moment of inertia about some axis that doesn't go through the center of mass for an object. So I'm just going to use a common example of a rotating disk. The thickness of this disk doesn't really matter. It's just got to be rotating about the center. I always show my rotation, something like that, so everybody can picture how that works. And this is one that you can actually look up on the table or any chart that has moments of inertia. And I'm going to label this as the moment of inertia for an axis through the center of mass. That's what the subscript is there. For a disk, it's 1 half m times the radius squared. So I'm going to indicate the radius here as r. And of course, the mass would be m. I'm not going to label that. I think that's pretty clear. So the question might be, well, what if instead of rotating it about that, what if you'd like to rotate it about an axis that's off-center a little bit? Perhaps an axis that goes through here, like half the radius away. All right, so here's how the parallel axis theorem works. First, you describe how far you shifted it. And generically, that's called D. Now, in other textbooks, it might be called something different, like an L. I've, in my old textbook, Halliday, Resnick, and Walker called it H. But you have to know just, you know, what your author is using for that symbol. Well, in this case, that D is half of the radius of the whole thing. And here's the beauty of the parallel axis theorem. I'm going to write it down here where I have some space. The new moment of inertia, because remember this is going to be different when we move our axis, is just what it was for the center of mass axis plus an md squared. So I can put in my 1 half mr squared, is my original one through the center of mass, and then I'm going to put in an m, and how much did I shift it? I shifted it by r over 2, and that gets squared. And then I'll give myself a little more space here, and then I'm just going to simplify. This is 1 half mr squared plus, and because the, the 2 in the denominator gets squared, it's 1 fourth mr squared in the second term for a nice, pretty simple 3 fourths mr squared squared. So that's our new moment of inertia through that blue axis that I had drawn. Now an important thing to notice about this, it's probably obvious but I'm going to point it out to you anyway, is that you always increase the moment of inertia when you move the axis off the center of mass. And so that means the lowest moment of inertia you'll ever have is when the axis is going through the center of mass. And I think in every one on the table that we have in our book, except for one, the stick um, spinning about its end, they always draw the moment of inertia through the center. I think we might also have a slab where it's um, orbiting about a corner, but typically you're going to see it drawn through the center of mass. So... Um, we can only increase it from there. Then, nice helpful property to know. I imagine engineers, mechanical engineers, use that when they're thinking about how to get something to spin about an axis. So I think that's going to call it good. Um, we're just about at four minutes. That's about enough for this. And, uh, of course, if you have questions, you know where to find me.